Hard AF Seltzer is now live in over 1,200 locations across the United States. We're now available in Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, Ohio, and Texas. Go to hardafseltzer.com today, click on the store locator, enter your city or zip, and find the nearest location closest to you. Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Yeah, welcome to the Monday Morning Recap, everybody. Brought to you by MyBookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros doubles that first deposit all the way up to $1,000. Tons of games were bet on this weekend. A lot of games were won this weekend. No need to reload the account for me. This is shaping up exactly how I predicted. Uh, you enjoying this? Yeah, yeah. Uh, very much so as a chalk donkey. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see the best of the best. Players. I do too. Uh, so I actually, I like upsets like the first round. But once we get like deep, Sweet 16, Elite Eight, Final Four, last year was gross, right? Yeah. You had FAU. Yep. You had... I mean, San Diego State. Oh decent. my God! You were sucking FAU's dick constantly last this year, year and this year. Not last year. Last year, I actually, if you remember, constantly doubted them okay. until they got to the final four. But yeah. since they brought everyone back, I yeah sucked their dick this year. And then, and then, yeah, we, no, it we've got a there's a there's still a couple of good tickets left on our uh, office pool. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, yeah. One guy, Chris, who doesn't have his stage name or anything in here, but he's got Kentucky in the lead eight, so he's going to lose points there. He's in first place right now, but he's probably going to lose to Diapers and Dementia, yeah. who's got a complete Elite Eight Final Four lineup, and he's missing Kentucky and New Mexico out of the uh, out of the Sweet 16. But I think those are going to work themselves out. So it's a close race. You're in third right now. Yeah, I'm one point behind the you're, leader but you're, there. But, you're but all mi- four final teams are still alive. You're missing Kentucky as well. Yep, that was the only one out of the elite eight. So you're gonna you're gonna end up losing some what five or eight point eight points. Yeah, eight I, points out of that it's one. something like this, truthfully, because um, the last the winner is worth thirty two points. Yeah. So if you get the finals correct and the winner, typically mm. you end up winning this. thing. Well, not if every like if five people get the finals, the final four and the winner correct. Correct. And one of them missed an elite eight. That's eight points, I think. Is right. What that is. Right. So yeah. It does kind of fuck you on that one. But otherwise, did Ross go full Shannon Sharp, where he just went one seeds? Close. Yeah. Um, but I told you this was going to be a chalky uh, tournament. It's got so Creighton in there. I've got okay. uh, Connecticut, Houston, Gonzaga. North Carolina, uh, and Creighton, and yeah. then the, to round out the Illinois eight, was I've got a two, Illinois, right? Arizona, and yeah. Gonzaga. Or Illinois three. was a three. Three, yeah. Three, yeah. Yeah. Um, I look before going into this. Uh, Dan and I have been taking a lot of NIL meetings for colleges. We will release which, which colleges we have signed with here in the upcoming weeks. Uh, I just want to make sure the can orders. And it's kind of like revealing a, a famous guest uh, on another show. I just want to make sure the guest shows up. Same with the fucking cans here. But one of these teams that is still alive is uh, one of the colleges we're signed with. Having the benefit of sitting in some of these NIL meetings, here's the difference with college basketball versus football. So if you if you take a school like, uh, let's say, Ohio State, for example, they're not spending any money on NIL for basketball players. They're all in for football. However, some of these basketball schools are going all in for, for players and then shifting the money out of football, and it seems like they're going for one or the other because they don't have the budget for this. What I've noticed, and I talked to you about this the other day, mm. um, after Kentucky lost, was you can no longer buy five all-star players that are the best in the nation and expect them to play together freshman year, you be can. the best, and win the championship. You can. So Kentucky, their problem, the last couple of years, Cal actually pivoted, right? He was all about the transfer portal. Mm-hmm. He kind of ignored what this got was, him to this, the dance. This was his first sort of, like, lotto team in a while. Yeah, he was like, you know what? I'm tired of the Oscar Shibwes. I'm tired of, yeah. you know, CJ Seaver. Like, all these guys that let me down in the past, I need to go back to my roots. I need to get these freshmen in. Yeah. And he had a great team. It was a fun team this year. Kentucky, could. this was a potential Final Four team. You got to get the, a mix, though, right? The fact is, Cal is yeah. a bad coach. He is not a good coach. He's terrible. He's got 54 wins in tournament history and how many titles? One. He's got one title. 54 wins, yes. one title. With yeah. Anthony Davis. Oh, he has the best talent of all time. But if you switch and look at what's what's going on now with the teams that are left, Connecticut 
because I, you know, I picked them to win. That's the deepest team there is, top to bottom. They've got they've got ten players they play. A lot of these players are only playing six to seven players a game here. Connecticut also has almost the exact same average age of their roster as the Oklahoma City Thunder. Yes, and they're that all helps. old. Yeah, it helps. It helps it to some does. degree. You still need stars, though, right? Mm-hmm. Gonzaga never were, was able to do it. It's been rare that an older assembled team like North Carolina was never able to do it either. With fucking, they have dudes that are in like eighth year at this point. You know, well, I mean? look, this is the Carolina. Big hot's like twenty four. It, it, it he's twenty six. Good. I, it wouldn't surprise me if Carolina went in this. Maybe, yeah. I mean, you, it's a it's a full team. They're older. They've played together. And they, they have a the star. Last year. But you need, yep, Davis. Yeah, they yeah. they do. Yeah, that's true. But you need. That's the thing, though. You can't. You, you need a star. Temi and uh, Holmgren was great in college, but it just like they couldn't get it done. I've already right? talked myself into this least talented Gonzaga team somehow making a run. That would be that's how it works. Winning sometimes. the Natty, but yeah, they're sure. an actual team and they play together like a team. And so I don't know. They Houston. had they, like Jalen Suggs and Drew Temi and shit. That was a good team. Yeah, that was a really good team. They they were athletic as fuck. They just like. Ran into a buzz. They ran, was yeah, they didn't Baylor. break the right way for yeah. them. They could have won. But if I'm looking at the rest of this, Tennessee, Tennessee's got a star, and they have a full team. Yeah. Where they're deep, they could win this. Uh, Arizona looks like they could win it. Illinois looks like they would be in it. Uh, North Carolina. Uh, Gonzaga, yes. I, I don't believe in Marquette out of this. That's kind of the only mm. Marquette team there. Has and a, I don't believe in Purdue. I, for, I forget his name, which doesn't bode well, but because but, he's not a lottery pick or anything like that. But Marquette's point guard is... Absolutely elite, the uh, white dude. Dwayne who's Wade, about nope. to win back up, back up, or back to back Big East Player of the Year. It's like uh, I'm just I'm ready for Purdue to Purdue. They will. I'm I'm waiting. What for do you it. mean? It'll like roll, roll a cancer kid out in a wheelchair? No, to try no, to get, no. They always no. lose. Right I just here. need these refs to stop giving Edie every call. Like it's, well, he is it's getting joke. hammered in there. He also hammers everyone else. He does. He should foul out of the game at ten minutes in. Yeah, he's gross. He's. I, the fact, I, like, I do not respect Zach Eady as a player, as a human, anything. <laughs> he's going top ten. He's just a fucking. He's, no, he's not. No, he's an no oaf. He's, he's maybe the 10. second round. Yeah. He might be a second round day. Everybody like, needs a seven foot four guy. No. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you mu- then you draft Taco Fall, who's seven six. He got and drafted. He, and he's in the G League. Well, he's he weighs about 115 pounds. Edie's gross. He moves slow. He's gonna get fucking destroyed in the NBA. Yeah. He can't guard the perimeter. No. He's not the modern day center. No, that's Chet Holmgren, baby. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, ugliest man alive. By the way, he says commercials played all through the tournament. Holy shit! Yeah, what can they not do anything wants. in his face? I, I feel like he, I feel like he might grow into it at some point. But Edie right has now, one move. He he looks like a gangly teenager still, and he's twenty two years old. Twenty one. Like, yeah. come on, man, fucking get it together. He's an ugly guy. Um, he's got a weird looking face. Yeah. Just because yeah. I bet you love those commercials. With, uh, I, oh, I, I can't stand it. <laughs> can't fucking stand it. They they played nonstop. And to hear him sing was even worse on top of it. I'm mm-hmm. like, holy Christ. I heard he's slaying tens left and right in Oklahoma I'm City. I'm sure he is. There are no tens in Oklahoma <laughs> City. What are you talking uh, about? Brick, sure you ever been to Bricktown? All right. <laughs> yeah. There are no tens in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City tens, I should say. Sorry. Yeah. Well, it's right next to Norman, so you can get some good. Yeah, you go down. He could go down. He's, he's literally college aged. Yeah. Like, yeah, he could go down to a frat in you, fucking OU. Yeah, you got to be careful, though. <laughs> yeah. His teammate ran into some of that bullshit. That's a lot of Giddy. Yeah. Sure did. <laughs> you don't want to find yourself at a prom all yeah, no shit. But yeah, no. once we get Purdue out of here, I'll be happy. Okay. Uh, and, and look, once we start getting better teams playing each other here, I just think with NIL, me personally, these smaller teams that used to compete and go really deep, I don't know that they can do it anymore because they just can't afford it. Um, you're going up against guys that are too good, and, uh, and the money's there to buy these coaches. I just don't see it happening as much anymore. Uh, we'll kids see. are staying longer in college. G League is going under, by the way. I, yeah, they just uh, uh, G League canceled one of their night teams. Is right. going under, right? I, I Which want... was like the alternative to college. It's yeah. like, hey, sign up for this team because yeah. they were playing against grown ass men and getting their ass beat. Mm. Right. Yeah. I wonder if um, if the unionization thing is going to bring some parity to it, though. It's too early to tell. It's going to be four or five years before that shit really takes effect. But for now, like San Diego State, for example staying competitive in basketball for a long run is unlikely. They've been good the last couple of years, but mm-hmm. it's unlikely to be able to sustain that unless you got fucking money. They'll keep yeah. it. I yeah. mean, maybe. A good coach. I mean, like, the you, you get the initial success, then you get the downstream uh, recruiting from that initial success, but you have to sustain winning, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then if you can't pay people, like, eventually it's going to be that if you're a fucking a top 50 college basketball player, you're getting paid, like, the the – 
college football players are going to get paid. They're not getting paid like that yet, but it's coming. It's coming. I mean, it's As worth- soon as people see results from the NIL program in basketball, everybody's going to do it, just like they did in college. And yes. In football, rather. Yeah. you yeah. got to pivot. Like the mm-hmm. ACC right now, barely hanging on as a conference because yeah. you have Florida State and Clemson trying to leave. For uh, football, I mean, yeah. The, uh, uh, well, for just all yeah, ball, yeah. Of everything, yeah. right? So, I mean, they have... There's some Calvary coming in with SMU and Cal and Stanford. Stanford. It's fucking insane. But that's not going to do anything no. for your conference. No, no, no. So, like, it's it's nice to see them kind of make one final run right now. We were kind of dunking on the S- or the ACC all year. Yeah. And you have Clemson in it. You have North Carolina, NC State, Duke. Duke. Duke's looking really good. They, Shit, Duke Clemson looks great. Clemson has fucking point. put a whooping on Baylor. I did not Clemson, see that so Clemson's, I Clemson went in the first round. I did not have them in the Sweet 16. Clemson's if, best is really good, but the Clemson can be really bad. If they Baylor can, hits yeah. their free throws, I've never seen a team miss as many free throws as that. They win that game by eight points. Oh, but you look at that resume, 10. Clemson's beaten Duke. They've beaten North Carolina. They beat uh, Alabama yep. at yeah, Alabama. They had an early season win. They, yeah. they went at Alabama and won, yeah. So they've got, like, hold on, what's the guard's name? But Hunter, they have some really bad losses. Hunter and P.J. Hall, their guard and center, are really good, and then it's, like, mid after that. they got so a bunch of white boys. If just... either one of those dudes gets in foul trouble, you're going to lose. Clemson's right? out next game. I, like, they're, they're not beating Virginia. No, no, they're There's playing no Arizona. Or Arizona. Arizona. Dude, yeah. they, no, no, beat no, Arizona. they could beat the shit out of Virginia. They yeah, Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean Arizona. Yeah. They're beating uh, Arizona's going to steal. I really don't think. I mean, I, I would be shocked if they beat Arizona. That would I, be. It shocking. would be surprising, but I don't trust Arizona. But I mean, like, it, it, still at the same time, though, like most of these programs, I mean, fuck, dude, just it's still programs run by like the best coaches in the country. Yeah. Fucking Greg McDermott, Rick Barnes, Mark Few, Matt Painter. Uh, I mean, Shaka at Marquette, Duke is Duke. I mean, Kelvin are you Samson at Houston, Bob, Bobby Hurley. Yeah, Nate he just won a natty. Yeah, Nate Oates, uh, fucking, uh, and North Carolina is North Carolina. Uh, was it Holtzman at Iowa State, or what's his name? Who's the coach at Clemson? I don't even know. I don't know either. Don't that's either. that's one of the few. But though. they're that's shooting one of the few. They're, yeah, they're, Clemson is shooting eighty percent on the season from the free throw line as a team. I'll do it. That's fucking wild, man. That's I mean, it's a white boy team, right? Yeah. That's, that's the only, like, fundamental. Prince, I think Princeton did that back in, what was it, 2001 when they made a run? Yeah. Or 99, maybe it was when Arizona won that year. 97 Not, is the last time Arizona 97. won. 97. But you yeah. take Baylor in that game. I mean, they were down by two. They missed 10 free throws left. in that game. But in the last five minutes, we were like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. They were down by two with 30 seconds left, and the guy was on the free throw line to tie the game, missed mm-hmm. both free throws. Yep. And then they ended up getting rolled. Um, but back to your point about the coaches, you still have to have money to pay those coaches. Uh, and so unless you have the money to do that, I'm not sure what's going to happen now. Or the money to pay your coach to leave. Like, right. Like Cal. I think he's owed $34 million in a buyout. Kentucky will write that <laughs> check owes, if Jay Wright hey, wants well, that job. He owes uh, his life. Yeah. In no. fact, actually. But You're that's right. the only – who's going right. to replace him if it's not Jay Wright? You can't fire Cal unless it's Jay Wright. That's it. Yeah. You're stuck. You're stuck with Cal, Kentucky fans. I'm sorry. Uh, now, on the women's side, um, my prediction is the ratings for the Final Four will be higher than the men's. If Kaitlyn Clark makes it, yeah. No. If, if it's, if it's and LSU. Kaitlyn Clark v. LSU. LSU, South Carolina. South Carolina is – I don't know if – they're going to have a big national draw. LSU will. They're undefeated. And then that, they're, they had, they're the they best team. Fight, they had a fight on the court oh, yeah, with they LSU. Always have a fight, yeah. So that'll build up the drama for that. And they talked the most shit, too. Have they, won, yeah. have they won back-to-back, or is this this would be their second year? I think they've already won back-to-back, uh, LSU right? LSU won last year. Oh, so South Carolina, then LSU, and now it's... Plus, you have that whole kind of uh, storyline with Mulkey and the uh, Washington Post. That, that article gonna that's going to come out. I've never seen a coach preemptively do a press conference about an article that hasn't even been published. Made herself yet. look worse. Worse. Much worse. Absolutely worse. But it's eaten up headlines and everybody sucked into the storyline. We just don't have that this year. She's in, a in fucking men's idiot. Hoops. Oh, she's, she's a dumb buffoon, as shit. Yeah. It's like, oh, if, if Andrew Reese had been in that fight, I reckon, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Why would you even say something like that? Eh. <sighs> You know, she's got to get up. Like a lot of these, Angel Reese is checked out. Are dumb as no, fuck. she was uh, waving people off the court the other day. So she's, yeah. she's still behaving like a child. But in that fight, she went oh yeah, sat yeah. Down she just walked the off. Yeah. I, lo- I like everybody in women's basketball though, talking shit. And so do I. You yeah. I and I'm watching it. I watched the Caitlin Clark game. Like I there, watched an opening round of, of the fucking women's tournament. The there was day. another game where uh, it was a white girl. She was talking shit, and uh, yeah, they're just they're just being bitchy. And I like it. That's what you need. Yeah. That's what you need. People to fucking yeah hate each other for ratings. Um, and I think it's going to outdraw the men this year. I really do. Uh, and it's interesting to see. Now, we'll switch on over because I want to stick to this unionization story here. Um, college football just announced uh, they're going to televise their first ever spring. Uh, you want to take a guess at who that is? 
I assume Ohio State. It is. It's Big Ten. It's their, it's their ratings cash cow. Um, but even seeing that, if I'm a player, I want to cut of that fucking advertising money. If you're going to advertise, the, if, if you're going to play the spring game live on Fox, do you know how much money that brings in? So, yeah, dude, you're going to be forced to unionize most of these college sports here, or you're fucked, I think. Yeah. I mean, what yeah. else is the, what else what else is left? Yeah, but then you got to like wonder what the second third order effects of that are going to be, right? Cuz the first thing that happens when you unionize is the stabilization of wages across the entire platform typically, right? Mm-hmm. Which means like the 15th dude on the roster is going to be expecting some money too. And at, under the current NIL deal, I don't think the 15th dude on a college basketball roster or the 80th dude on a college football roster are getting paid shit. They're not getting dick. Right? So it's like maybe what we're working with with the pool that the university has might play into that to some degree. But you, it's not like you can compel uh, private companies to sponsor a kid that they don't want to sponsor, right? That's not going to work. So there's going to have to be some kind of regulation involved. If they decide to do it this way, the union, if the kids unionize, it will result in some kind of infrastructure being built to spread money around. Communism, I think, is what we call it. But yeah. that's what's going to happen, right? And it's going to – I think at first it will – take it downhill a little bit because people will be less likely to spend money. Like private companies will have to eventually put money into a pool instead of to an individual, right? Yep. To, to some degree. The University of Texas already does that. Yeah. It's so, called the Burnt Orange Slush Fund, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then they and divvy then it out to the players. Clemson's been doing it for years with IPTE. I pay 30 a year, right? You see those little stickers on the back oh, of the yeah, rice yeah, park? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just the alumni fund, which, it's, <laughs> yeah. come on, man. It's yeah. buying fucking uh, uh, tr- uh, trucks and shit. Come on, yeah, be real. But yeah, it, it will result eventually in a stabilization of of salaries. I guess if you want to call them that. And I don't know how. Then you take away the big blue blood rich schools' ability to just snag people and purchase people, right? Right. Like maybe they'll have some room to do that, but it's going to be almost like an effective salary cap, right? That it, there 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 will be a salary cap as a result of unionization if it happens. But each school brings in different money. It, it just will never be fair unless you put in a salary cap across mm-hmm. all of it. Well, they'll have to. If they unionize, they'll have to because some fucking chud, the, the third string tight end on a team is going to be like, oh, I should be getting fucking paid too. Like, well, no, you shouldn't because you suck. But I don't think you know. there is going to be a salary cap. And I actually think NIL and everything is going to make teams kind of be more competitive because guys – if they don't get paid, they're just going to leave and go to another school, a smaller school. Well, what yeah. it will, I, I don't know if it'll, it'll, if it'll have that big, in especially effect. for basketball, because it's only five guys. On yeah. the well, five but, guys but, is easier because yeah. all you need is two. And then but, the rest of yeah. them, you can I'm build. actually but like really will, disappointed. Colorado's not going as far as they, I mean, they have a bunch of dudes that transferred in and were you mean awesome. the football team. No, the basketball team oh, just yeah. lost, but yeah, they just lost. I wish they went a little further. Cause they were, they were, they were really fun. Mm. They were great. <clears throat> they were just, yeah, they were exciting. They were, uh, I mean, they lost a really good game. They beat Florida in probably the best game of the tournament. Yeah, one hundred two to hundred. Yeah, I tell you one thing: it'll it'll eliminate is and it, that the portal are already did this to some degree. But dudes riding the pine for two years before they get on the court or get on the field, right? Like Joe Burrow in twenty eighteen, that never would have happened. Right, like he would have been ne- gone. He yeah. never, yeah, he would have been gone already before any of that shit happened. Same thing with Quinn Ewers, probably. Although yep. he kind of signed a deal. Prior, but yeah, well, that, he, even he bounced. That, I mean, he bounced from Ohio State. That'll be Texas. eliminated, which means you're not going to see like the the dominance of certain teams was based on carrying over talent or a system from year to year with replaceable talent, right? That's usually the the key to success in college football. I don't know how you're going to sustain that even with money if there's more people with money out there. Like if other if 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 the if the G five class of schools start going out into the marketplace with NIL pools and start making money and fucking paying kids, they're, one, they're going to get more exposure uh, or they're going to get more playing time at those places. Plus, they're going to get paid the same amount of money. So uh, why the fuck do I need to go to Alabama? I really uh, don't even, think it changes anything, though, right? Like the power programs in football are going to remain the power programs. Basketball is where it's a little different. You just got to get more creative. You get guys from D2, D3. I mean, that fucking kid from Oakland, right? Like yeah, he yeah, just yeah. came in. And yeah, he's a fucking stud. Is he? He's, he's going to be. Key. He's going to be an insurance agent in six months. <laughs> no, he's, he's a college he's gonna be stud, playing though. Twelve minutes a game for Spo down in Miami. Uh, maybe, but he's Shooting he's threes. like he's a college stud. Yeah. So yeah. So that, I mean, basketball, just get creative. Football is just going to remain the same, just because Ohio State, Alabama, 
all these power programs are just going to remain in power. That's that's it. And, and then something interesting that happened over the weekend, uh, one of Alabama's best prospects, that uh, Cadden Proctor kid, uh, who transferred after Saban left, transferred to Iowa, took all of their NIL money. And, and went then back. after two weeks of spring practice, he was like, oh, shit, this team sucks. Yeah, this i got to get the fuck out of here. Blood. Well, yeah. he initially, I think, committed to Iowa, right? Then he went to Alabama. He did. And then, yeah, yeah, he's just flip-flopping. But the coach afterwards said, look, he took all of our – he fleeced us. He took our entire budget for NIL, and uh, and we're fucked. Very we Iowa, in- too, to spend all your money on, like, an offense – yeah, Lyman. of Lyman, yeah. But that, that's, another, that's another downstream effect of this, though, with the unionization part, should it happen, is, one, you're talking about from, let, let's call it management, because that's what it is. The university would be management in this situation, and the players would be labor. So the management side are going to want contracts now because of this asshole from yep. Alabama, right? And they should, because it's fucked up. Like, you can't do that shit. I agree. So... They're going to want contracts. Well, if the players unionize, those contracts don't just have to go through the player's agent. They have to go through the fucking union rep as well now, Mm -hmm. right? Which means they're going to have a collective bargaining agreement at some point where all the fucking people play by the same rules. I mean, it's it's unnecessary bureaucracy, really, and it's going to fuck it up. And I also, think. if you become an employee, right, like the Dartmouth basketball team, yeah, yeah. Uh, you win five games a year, you're fired. I'm sorry. You're gone. Yeah, you, you, you don't fired. get a college education. Yeah, but they, right. like, but yeah. they, can, they can already pull your scholarship anytime they want. That's not new. That's true. It's right. a little different. Yeah, you, I mean, you it, would, it, would, off the it would be <laughs> to, it would get at the press conference as the, as, as the AD. It might sound a little different. Like, we're pulling all these motherfucker scholarships. And we're like, hey, these guys don't perform, so we're firing them and hiring new guys. That's technically different, but also the same. I'm sure yeah. there's, like, a legal process. <laughs> but if you're, like, in a right-to-work state like Texas, you, know, you fire without cause. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 But you can, again, you can do that. I don't know what uh, a college scholarship, I don't think it's binding – Beyond the, the one year that you're currently in, it's even. not. And if your grades drop, mm. um, you're out too. So like you know when you yeah, go but that's in, for cause though, right? That's termination yeah. for cause, and that's legal even in, in in unionized states. What he's talking about is a right to work state, which is I could fire you right now for any reason, and I don't have to give you a reason for it even. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would be interesting to see if that happens. Yeah, to be honest, it would. And this will bleed over into the NFL here because today, uh, pretty controversial, they outlawed this. Uh, swivel hip drop tackle which is what we used to just call a tackle yep you grab a guy and you twist your hips and drag him to the ground which is we thought was the safest way to tackle somebody you're not spearing the guy you're not helmet to helmet you're not clipping his knees out from under him you're grabbing him by the midsection and dragging him to the ground yeah so now they're just gonna fucking uh you you get close to a guy and you say hey oh uh it's sarcastical from south right it's like oh do you mind if i Wrap my arms around you. Like, consent's important to me. That's what they do in a spring game. So yeah. those are the rules in a spring game. Once you grab a guy with two hands, then they stop the play, and then they set the thing from there. It's not fun, but I think this, even this rule, goes back to college. The CFP expanded. Um, they're going to do 14 teams. I don't know if you guys saw it. So that'll yeah. start in 2026. So the 12 teams wasn't even good enough. and We haven't even fucking started yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's 24 <laughs> to 26. Then they just approved 14 um, so that's going to push this out till January 27th. So what you're saying likely. is they have the option to play less games and have less exposure to risk or less exposure to risk by tactic in more games. Yes. And so that's this, fucking gay as fuck. I'm dude. with you. But this college, that college schedule now, if a, if a kid is expected to play 17, 18 games, which is a full pro schedule, then you get into the NFL the only way to p- keep these people alive is this rule today of this no tackling by the waist thing, however the fuck that's going to work out. It's 15 yards and an automatic first down. Good Lord. This is going to fuck up so many games this year with people being pissed off about it. And they say a lot of people are getting hurt with this kind of tackle, but what, like, what kind of hurt? Sprained ankles and shit? I, or a no serious idea. injury, or what is it? They're saying like a Bo Jackson type injury, sitch. How often or does knees that happen? Or, exactly. Like a rotational fracture of yeah. a joint? Yeah. I or, think or knees. Uh, knees is what they were saying in this article, too. Okay, it should be well, like in Dune 1, where <sighs> Timothy Chalamet is just like, Yield! Do you yield? Yeah. Like you just get close enough and yeah. make them yield. Make them yield, yeah. Um, and then you pee on them, then they're yes. your property, basically. Yeah, make yes. a man submit. Yeah. Um, That's the This is tackle. like. <laughs> I don't. I, I get it. They, they want to play more games, so the preseason is going to be gone after this, right? Yeah, they're knocking it down from. So they're going to add a game this year. Go uh, eighteen game schedule regular season, 
and then knock it back to two preseason games for the NFL. Again, this is just trying to keep players alive. If you're playing 18 games in college now and then another 18 in the NFL, if you're a running back, I don't know how you stay upright for more than four years. Um, in addition to that, uh, teams will also receive a third challenge after one successful challenge. So that's going to drag out these games longer than baseball. It's actually what I liked about baseball's changes this year. Uh, well, they were already longer than baseball, by the way. Like, football was never – baseball was never, like, so much longer than the other sports. Yeah. Also, football, the total time – the total time of action out of the 60 minutes of the clock is, what, 11 minutes? Yeah, 10 it, minutes and 30 seconds, some, I think. And yeah. that's the dirty secret about college football, too. It's like games are four and a half hours, five yeah. hours. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, because they got to fucking introduce every motherfucker that ever went to school there at halftime. Yeah. Like, well, oh, if you're – there. Oh so, my like, God, you and I dude. going in person this year, holy shit. And we got to see the best games on the planet, but goddamn, every commercial break was a half hour yeah, long. It's It was it's brutal. It's a four to four and a half hour game now. Especially that one at Notre Dame was fucking brutal. Holy that's, shit. Uh, they, 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 have, they have that NBC contract. Yes. Yeah. It's a primetime game. They're just like, oh, fucking. But it's money. It's just money coming in, so they don't give a fuck. How, How much make money a, do you need to make? That's what I say. Man, I'm going to make a bold prediction right now. <laughs> Within the next 10 years, 10 years from now, I think baseball makes a massive comeback. It's already it's making a comeback. Yes, but I think we are going to get to the point where we're kind of over football. I think football takes a dive <laughs> with all these changes, and baseball rises again. I'm kind of over it now except for – In 10 years. Some, some things. Like the, I like the Packers. I'm kind of curious to see where they're going to go because they keep making moves. I think Jordan Love is legit. Yeah. Like there's a couple of teams that I'm interested in. I'm actually also interested in seeing if Cousins can turn – Atlanta into a playoff contender, to be honest, like a real one. Um, but other than that, it's like, oh, who's going to fucking maybe beat the Chiefs this year? Bills can't afford anybody, so they no. didn't get anybody. They, they Cowboys didn't do the anything. The Bills can't afford people, though. If they restructure their fucking uh, interception machines contract, like every other quarterback in the league so far has restructured their deal. Even Dak is getting ready to, right? right? Like Patrick Mahomes, the best out of all, everybody did it. Tom Brady did it for years and won. Yep. So don't I, I don't want to hear a fucking word out of Josh Allen's mouth about winning until he restructures his deal and gets some other players in that fucking place. Because if it's just about the money for him, then just say that. Yeah. Like, I'm here to play. I don't give a fuck to sit like, what's his name from the Angels? Um, no, they're, they're, it's all about coming together as a unit, like those hijackers on 9-11. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly like getting uh, the, job done. the coach well, of the Bills said. Yeah. They were already uh, together, though. They were together. Before. Uh, yeah, but, but the they Bills accomplished their goal. Yeah, they accomplished their goal. The Bills have. McDermott has never. not. Well, yeah. not the White House, though. True. Well, that one that one crash landed. That's, that's kind of like well, winning back to back. Three out of four, Bulls. 75%. That's Hall of Fame. It's not numbers. bad. Oh, yeah. Uh, the other rule change that was uh, accepted here if there's a double foul during a down in which there is a change or changes of possession, including uh, one of the fouls is a post possession foul by a team during a scrimmage kick. The last team gaining possession will keep the ball after enforcement for its foul, provided it did not foul before it last gaining possession. Ugh. I'm not reading all that. That's a lot. I'll just watch a game and be like, what Can, happened? Are they oh, going to okay. put up? So usually when they have these rules, um, the league makes uh, like a seven or eight minute video showing illegal tackles and then legal ones. They did this after the helmet to helmet shit cuz I, I remember uh, a bunch of Ray Lewis's tackles went there and they were fucking vicious. Yep. And they did that on purpose. Like you can fuck people up. You just got to do it the right way. It's like, okay. Well, he had a bunch of penalties too, right? You just didn't show the video on those. I wonder what it's going to look like. What does a legal tackle fucking look like anymore? For real. They're like gonna, what does it look like? So they're going to do the They'll publish something. Yeah, they're right gonna at, it'll video. be out after the draft, but like what Correct. the fuck? By the time mini camp starts. What's a tackle? What's a catch? Football's God the, damn it, dude! It's it's on the. We don't even know what a one is anymore. It already peaked. We're we're now in it's the a, new era. It's a fucking mess. It's gonna yeah. suck. But because of gambling, I mean, the ratings have never been higher. So gambling's everywhere now. Like yeah. it'll lose its luster. You know what I've I heard think. recently are a bunch more women talking about getting into other sports like football, golf, just because of gambling. So I don't think it's going to be – I don't think the football part of it is going to be the, the attraction. I think it's the gambling or it is. the – This was the first time my wife watched an entire weekend of game because mm -hmm. of gambling. That was it. Of uh, basketball? Of uh, basketball. Yeah. Um, and it was simply because of gambling. Yeah. So, you know, she watched uh, Super Bowl and all that other shit because of Taylor Swift. Yeah. I think you're seeing this shift of women coming in and getting in on it. It's not even really just the gambling. It's just like something to do with your friends. 
more right. more than trying to make money is what I mean. Yeah, they're just having fun with it. Yeah. Nobody's no women at least are trying to pay for a mortgage or anything like well, that. Well, they're trying to pay for their fucking titties, I think. Well, right? That's get what, bigger titties. What does that run you these days? Ten k? Um, five to ten. Give or take. You yeah. want a good job, though. Yeah, yeah you, you want to spend the money. It depends on where you are you in the country. Do. If you go to if you go to like uh, Missouri or something like that, it's probably six thousand. If you go to L.A., it's probably like twenty five. Okay. Right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's a cost of living adjustment on titties. Yeah. Uh, also in Missouri, they're gonna use like softballs where you can see the seams coming through the skin. Mm. You have to. Yeah. And they they also fill it full of barbecue sauce, which yeah. is an interesting choice. Yeah, but it's the only way you can get off. And it's the only way I can. Right out of a nipple. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, their barbecue so such trash that they have to cover it up with barbecue. That whole sauce. state is trash, to be oh, honest. Boy. If we're like, the, ever, ever, there's no food that comes out of it that's any good. I like. Like, Joe's. hey, we burned it. Doom, 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 doom. I'll there stand we go. up for Joe's. It's I like a, Joe's barbecue. No, it's yeah. terrible. I love it. The one in the gas station. Uh, we got some sponsors. Speaking of gambling, that put this shit wagon on the air. First and foremost, mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros doubles that first deposit all the way up to a thousand dollars. A lot of people in uh, Drinking Bros Sports on Facebook posting their bets. They want a lot of fucking money this weekend. Congratulations. Uh, a lot of blowouts. A lot of spreads being covered there across the board. Uh, only games I lost when I was going for the upset. I, I had a money line on Oakland. Um, they played well, though, in that second game, and they had a shot to win it. Uh, that was the only disappointment there. But everything else was pretty chalk, and you guys won a shit ton of money this weekend. Congratulations. Did not win in golf. Second place in a row for the second straight week, and I you want don't to end to, my life. You don't get to claim that you picked fucking Wyndham Clark two weeks ago, because you didn't. No, I didn't, but Xander Shoffley did. Yeah. Second place, right? Yeah. Cool. So is that, is that two second places in a row for me? Yeah, but did, he re- did Xander really have a shot? He was winning point? the entire tournament, up until mm-hmm. two holes left. Yeah. So what? It's seventy out of seventy-two holes. Do you playing. really got to pull out this hater bullshit in the middle it's of an crazy. ad read? <laughs> don't go. What the fuck? I man? mean, it's so fucking insane. It's like you've never Piece read a, a podcast or, or a handbook on podcasting. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Just get him a T-shirt that just says "Yes and," and then th- for ad reads, just shut the fuck up. Uh, my bookie's got everything covered over there. Top fives, top tens, top twenties across the board there. Uh, won some money on that. I hit a bunch of top twenties this week, so that was good. Yeah, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. For real, you can pro- you can make somewhere between five and ten top twenty solid top twenty bets every week. Easily. That's that's like shouts to Scott Stallings. I, I, yeah, uh, and then shouts to fucking Cam Young for choking again, dude. Had another top ten there. Again, man, we're just wasting money on that guy. That's kind <laughs> of his deal, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's like his seventh second place finish. It's it's awful. Uh, but the rest of the weekend was great. A lot of great games coming up. Thursday night games coming up here. A lot of people betting on uh, women's college basketball as well. I don't know if you saw Dave Portnoy from, uh, from Barstool dropped $100,000 on Holy Cross. I don't know why he did it or what inside info he had um, because I'm not familiar with, with female I think it's just Holy bored. Cross team. Here's the thing. They won by like 50. That was a 16 uh, playing game. Jesus Christ. And then Christ. they got rolled. I mean, he, he, won, I, he won by like 60. It was, it was uh, incredible. But there's people betting on it. I, I will switch um, this week and start betting on some female shit, dude. Once Caitlin Clark is, uh, is against some of these good teams, those spreads were pretty big. But I'll, I'll be in on that. South Carolina's winning by like 60 points. Easily. Yeah. I, I like, it's a good bet. There's a good game going on now. I mean, Ole Miss, Notre Dame, but it's, it just jumped. It's 15 points now. Okay. Uh, next up, we got firstform.com slash drinking bro shit. I didn't even take my microfactors. That's why they're right here. It's right here on the desk. Uh, got the energy drink over energy there, too. Right shit, dude. Oh. Best in the biz, those energy drinks. They'll be gone in 60 seconds. And this office here, the microfactors, though. This is something you should have on your desk, uh, wherever you work, or it's your house. Get rid of all of those million jars of pills that you're scraping along the thing, trying to figure the fuck out. Boom. Six. Six of the essentials right in a bag. Pop them in your mouth. There's 30 bags in here, one for every day of the month, and then you just reorder. You can subscribe. It's awesome. What's in it? Antioxidants, CoQ10s, multivitamins, fruits and veggies, probiotics, and the EFAs in here. Everything you need to get your gut running uh, good, your fucking heart pumping, and, uh, and get your mind operating at a higher level than Joe Biden here. While you're there, grab those energy drinks as well. Those are the best they make, man. Holy shit, those are fantastic. Uh, gigantic fan of them. Uh, head on over to firstform.com forward slash drinking bros today. Get the micro factors, grab some energy drinks while you're over there, and you're going to get free shipping on orders over $75. 
When you're shipping cans, dude, that's a fucking massive expense. So you're going to get them pretty cheap over there. I don't know how they're able to do it, but uh, that's awesome. Take advantage of it. Uh, next up, we got BioProteinTech.com. Promo code Drinking Bros gets you $30 off over there. HGH, Human gore Growth Hormone. Man, these Monday shows, dude, I trip up on these goddamn ads. I'm sorry. All right, daddy parties on the weekend. Uh, what, what's in the HGH? Well, it's the, it's, the, it's the shit that the doctors aren't giving you there. There is no doctors. There is no needles over there. It's just a little tiny vial. You pop it underneath your tongue right before nai-nai, uh, and it'll help you recover faster. Great in the bedroom as well. And, uh, and it's all the good shit that uh, Big Pharma uh, doesn't give you with the needles and the doctor visits and everything else. You don't even have to zoom in and, and pretend to talk to somebody. Um, it's it's one of those things that's, uh, you know, by, shit, age 35, 50% of your, your hormones start going down. And uh, testosterone is only about 50% of it. Uh, best part is BioPro Plus works fast, easy, and it's 100% safe. It's trusted by physicians since 2009, and its benefits can be felt in days instead of months. So if you want to change the way you look, perform, and feel without all the risk of Big Pharma and their synthetic stuff, head on over to bioproteintech.com to learn more or click the link in the audio description or on the YouTube page here, and it'll take you right there. And again, use that promo code Drinking Bros for thirty dollars off your first order. Last but not least, we got Drinking Bros Tickets.com. If you want tickets to any of these games, men's or women's, uh, boom, you're good to go. Masters is coming up. We're trying to work our way down to Georgia for that. Uh, tickets for everything across the board, you name it, rodeos, all the fun stuff. You can get it over there. Uh, we'll switch on over to baseball here, Bob, with Shotani. What's the latest on this fucking guy, and what, what happened? Uh, there's a uh, press conference later today. In half like, an hour, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For he's going to, I guess, explain some stuff. Uh, I, ca- I kind of hope he Sammy Sosa's it at Congress, and is just like, I don't know English. So a bit bit bop Yeah. Um, so the big news that's come out, aside from the fact that he's given a press, press conference, so maybe we'll be able to talk about it on fake news uh, later on. I'll keep an eye out when we're doing the show. But the biggest news, I think, isn't his press conference. It's that people have been reaching out to the bookie in question. And apparently that bookie are people, uh, people that were involved in that investigation. Cause he had been under federal invest- investigation for some time. That's how they fucking found all this stuff. Right. Um, <clears throat> the bookie has been bragging that Otani's one of his clients for some time. Really? Yes. Okay. So, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a uh, – he does some sports journalism here and there. I won't mention his name because he gets sued all the time for it. But um, he brought up the Jordan thing yep. where Jordan almost definitely got caught gambling and had issues and maybe his dad got clipped because of it and Stern made him go away for a while. Shit, Otani's going to play minor years. league basketball then. A lot of people, A lot of people believe that. A lot of people, dude. A lot of people. A lot of people that I consider to be very credible believe that Jordan had to fucking go away for a while. That was, right? I mean, Bill Simmons has been floating that theory yeah. for, for a years. long yeah. time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they can't do it with Otani. He's too. He, like I, you could say, yeah, Jordan was too big to do that. There's what the fuck? How do you? This is the biggest superstar on earth. Well, also, right Jordan now. never. There was never any actual thing that came out about him being. Uh, even one degree away from sports gambling, right? Like, he gambled, like, he mm-hmm. was at the tables and shit, yeah. but there was nothing that, to my <laughs> recollection, of Jordan being, like, right next to someone yeah. who was betting on sports so this or giving is, money to someone who was betting on So this is, like, Jordan mixed with Pete Rose, then, yes. basically. Yeah. So I don't know how they handle this. I mean, <sighs> Manfred's a turd, right? Yeah. He, he's Bud Selig's little bitch. Always was back in the day. He already announced his retirement, right? Yeah, in like, in like 28, 28, 28, I think. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> but you you saw how Selig handled it. He fucking covered it up, and then he threw all the players under the bus. Got to at the earliest possible convenience. Yeah. So, what do you do here? Do you throw Otani under the bus because Damn. it's gonna come out? Like the, it's it's it in nineteen uh, uh, ninety three, right? Maybe you could hide shit like that, but this dude's out here giving fucking interviews and shit now, and yeah. it's the internet. It's going to be all over TikTok in a week. As right. soon as as soon as this press conference with Otani happens in thirty minutes, 
within two days, people will have talked to other people involved in this, figured out what's true and what's not, put it out on the internet, and like Major League Baseball is going to stand there with their dick in their hand and do what exactly? After not letting Pete Rose into the Hall of Fame for not even decades. letting him into Major League Baseball stadiums, yes, for decades, for like 40 and, decades. Years. and then obviously. Arguably the worst scandal in American sports history, the Black Sox. Yeah. That, I mean, Shoeless Joe Jackson still blackballed from, from now, baseball. Is the smoke that he actually bets on baseball or other sports? So I did read that baseball was not a sport he was betting oh, on. then that's fine. Really? Dude. Then what's the I don't know. That's not confirmed or anything, but I read that baseball was not a sport that was being bet on by uh, Mazahari. If Otani wants to bet on fights, let him bet on fights. I agree, honestly, but... Are you not allowed to do that if you're not betting on baseball? Uh, I don't think so. So you can't bet on any sports if you're a professional athlete? I like, mean, you go to a, Vegas, you can't just... a private organization. On I don't think they want you sports betting. Yeah. No shit, I didn't know that. Yeah, but you're an independent contractor. I, dude, I don't fucking know. I don't fucking know. So for me, um, you know, I was telling you guys this before the show. It leaked uh, next year's game that's going to lead off the, the year is going to be overseas. It's going to be played in Tokyo. Uh, it's Cubs versus Dodgers. Um, obviously, Otani's going to be in that. My prediction is nothing will happen with this. They've got to cover this up. Oh, yeah, nothing's going to happen. It's the biggest if, superstar in the world for Major League Baseball. If he didn't bet on baseball, nothing will happen, and probably rightfully so. Yeah, if he did, if he wasn't betting on games that he's playing in, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I, but I still that, think games that uh, he could still have propri- proprietary information on other uh, like maybe, yeah, 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 maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. But there, there, has, there are a couple of Twitter threads that show specific games where there are huge odds in his favor and he had a really bad game, like five different games over the course of his pitching career. Where, no shit. Where one of them was against the Braves. He was minus... It was like minus two and a half angels in that game or something like that. Um, and I don't remember what the line was specifically. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't remember what the, um, the straight up bet was. It was like, I think it was like over, I think it was minus 305 or something like that. It was a huge spread. For a baseball game, it's a yeah, huge it was spread, big, right? Yeah. And he gave up six runs and went over three with two strikeouts. Maybe it's a coincidence. But there was like three or four of those games. To be fair, giving up six runs to the Braves... Yeah, not crazy. Right. Uh, I, so who knows, right? But like, if if somebody starts doing some f- like forensic accounting here and yeah. then matching it up with his p- specific performance, that there could be some issues. Who knows? I, I think he bet on baseball. I think he bet over and over and over again. And I, I think uh, Manfred is a fucking turd. Uh, this is the one guy he would bow down to, Man. and they don't have a choice but to cover this up. That's my prediction. Because uh, then you're gonna fuck up all of next year too. You're going to fuck up the next 10 years. Yeah. You're going to fuck up maybe the next 50 years. Yeah, here's years. the thing, though. Just wait two weeks. Don't say anything. Well, for It'll him, go away. It'll go away. The, the, we don't care. But, but here's the other part about this. For Otani, here's where he's lucky is he's going through an interpreter. Whoever yeah. this guy is doing this press conference in a half hour, hire the best in the business. Whatever the fuck he says, make it sound as polished as possible, and that way... Walk away, and I agree with you. Walk away, and I agree with you. Don't do any more interviews. Here's what I would do, too, if I was Manfred. I would uh, find a way to pay a team immediately to sign Trevor Bauer. Shift that news cycle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shift that news cycle Something immediately. a little different than uh, Especially after I'm he just saying, that's, but the news, well, the it, news will shift entirely away from Otani if, if you just get someone to sign Trevor Bauer. Especially after he carved the Yankees up in three innings. Yeah. Playing with a fucking weirdo Japanese team or Mexican yeah. team, excuse me. Robinson Cano played in that game mm. as well. Uh, yeah, Trevor but he's Bauer. on. Robinson Cano is down there playing like Mexican baseball now, and he is on every fucking steroid you can find. I promise you that. He's 41 years old. He yeah. hit a home run and two RBIs. Yeah, he also that. got suspended for 162 <laughs> games for taking steroids a couple years ago. I love it. Um, but, anyways, I think it was 2018. But Trevor yeah. Bauer pitched uh, three scoreless innings. Yep. Yeah. And they beat the Yankees. Yeah, he's dealing. Yeah. But now saying, he's he's a good he's still uh, uh he would be if he came into the league right now he'd be a top 20 pitcher in the league right now. He's he's very talented. So why won't anybody sign this guy? Um well there's rumors that there's other women mm-hmm. yeah. um that who are going to pre- file charges or whatever the fuck if he does decide to come back. If I was him, I would fucking sue every one of them. I would find out who they are and sue them. There's like, just so much smoke. Char- charge yeah. me. Charge me or shut the fuck up, right? Yeah. Um, he, you have a right to face your accusers in this country, and you have a right to due process. Um, so I think at some point, I honestly think he's going to end up suing Major League Baseball and getting 
a, a, a settlement in the same way that Colin Kaepernick did, frankly. Okay. But uh, even before all this, wasn't he, like, super unlikable? And just a uh, I mean, one time he got pulled out of a game and he turned around and threw the ball over the center field fence. I, I don't mind shit like but that. But most of his teammates didn't really ride. No, he was like a like dick. Him. No, he's sure. a dick. Yeah. 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 But he, whatever. Bad clubhouse presence. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I've got a prediction here. I, this, he feels like a Houston Astro. I think the Ashes are dirty. They already they took so much smoke when they traded for Roberto Azuna a couple years ago. I don't know. And the trash can stuff. I don't know if they really want to deal with that. I think they've leaned in, and they're just like, fuck it. We're Thanks. America's most hated team. Yeah. Let's just get Trevor Bauer and load up that, that just pitching stuff. And a scumbag organization like the Atlanta Braves might sign in. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I wish. We already yeah. have one. I wish, though. Like, yeah. But that's what a I, scum, I want. They won't do it. A scumbag organization. Do you remember the 90s fucking Phillies? Yeah, what's your, what's your hillbillies point? with mullets? Yeah. You're a scumbag. Lenny Fuck Dykstra, Kurt uh, Schilling. Good, yeah, good guy, Lenny Dykstra. <laughs> yeah. Good guy, Lenny, Kurt Schilling. Lenny Dykstra, who didn't he go to jail for prison. meth? He went to prison. No, yeah, he was, oh, was stealing, fraud, stealing cars. Yeah. Sorry, he did his time. He <laughs> served. Real estate he paid fraud. his debt. <laughs> yeah. I don't actually think he's. Wait, Lenny Dykstra's that. son is married to somebody's Meadow Soprano. No. Yep. Is that it? Yep. So she. Speaking of that, they have a new show. Her they do. And, her and the younger. It's, her it's younger good. Brother. It's on YMH. They're down the street. Yeah, it is. It's really good, actually. Lenny Dykstra is married to Meadow, Meadow Soprano? Soprano. Let that sink in. Not Lenny. Not Lenny. His son. Oh, son. his son. Okay. He's like, is it? What is his name? Absolutely. Is he is not stupid slobbering shit. all over Meadow Soprano. He, I'm like, God, that would be awful. He's named yeah. after a baseball term. Um, the kid. Cutter. Cutter. That's it. Cutter Dykstra. <laughs> it's a sweet name, though. Cutter's a dope name. Like that's. Yeah. Do you think that he named him that so he could finally hit a cutter? Maybe. Maybe. Lenny's definitely he's still hitting the card. Is shows, that a right? Mariano Rivera? Oh, yeah, yeah, Just yeah. signing he's autographs everywhere. for we money. Could, we could get him on the show tomorrow. For the right price. For, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're, not paying, we're not paying anybody to come on the show. <laughs> it would be like Wolf of Wall Street, though. His stories are fucking insane. Uh, just you would just give him a hot meal. I'll, I'll just yeah, yeah, fucking a baggie full of cocaine probably do it. Yep. And I've got several. So, so. his teeth fell out. You know. Yeah, you don't teeth. need teeth to do cocaine, bud. I'm not sure if you've done it before. No, no, no. He, he got new teeth. Oh, good for him. Yeah. doing drugs. Yeah. Uh, who knows? You know, uh, to say. He actually, you know what it might have been from, is he always had a f- big, fat fucking... Gnawing, yeah. dude. Mm-hmm. Holy shit. Yeah, he was fucking beaver dipping and everything. Yeah. He was unstoppable out there. One of my favorite players growing up. Great name, too. Just yes. for a baseball player. He was fucking awesome. Uh, I remember, I think it was Andy Van Slyke who was just like, God damn it, dude, playing it. When I had to go out to center field after he was out there, it's like the entire outfield was just covered dip spit. And he goes, it was fucking miserable. Um, he goes, there was balls that I wouldn't even dive after just because I didn't want it on my fucking pants all game. Yeah, that's fair. It's sweet, though. Uh, that was the old vet. It's called battlefield preparation. <laughs> <laughs> First baseman used to, like, I read, there's this inside baseball book uh, that would get published every couple of years that I used to read. Just talking about the weird gamesmanship and locker room stuff that happened. Kind of an inside look. Like uh, Julio Franco hated playing first base. Hated it. He started out as a second baseman with the Rangers. He hated playing first base. So he would tell, if there's a runner on first, he would tell him, if you get off far enough and he throws over here, I'm going to slap you with his mitt as hard as I fucking can right in your face every time. And remember, Julio Franco is an Adonis. You, you, nobody's fucking with that dude. And he was you, 60, you remember, he you was remember what, like 60 years old. You remember what he looked like at 50? Yep. Imagine 25-year-old yeah. Julio Franco telling you this shit. Just absolutely rippling. Yeah, like I mean, he, it's like I've never seen a human being like that before. I, so I, he would just, like, he would, if somebody threw over, he would catch the ball and just, like, rake it right across the guy's face every single time. Shit like that is fun, right? I like it. That's enjoyable. Uh, we'll switch over to the NFL draft. I want to announce uh, we got a new co-host for the NFL show this year. It's Derek Wolf. Derek Wolf, formerly of the uh, Denver Broncos. He's a world champion. Sure is. Uh, and a hell of a guy. We, we did an episode with him on Drinking Bros. He's the one that killed that fucking mountain lion. Yeah. Um, Speaking of a mountain lion. Hand. Mountain lions got him back. Yeah, the mountain lions got, got, got one back this weekend. Yeah. Did they? Yeah, they, there was like these two, an 18-year-old and a 21-year-old some out cruising out somewhere. Yeah, you like this uh, cyclist. Yeah. Yeah, the recyclist, yeah. Yes! And the mountain lion grabbed the 21-year-old and drug him, like, 50 miles. Holy and, shit. And they finally, they finally found the kid, like, the body. Or, and, the, like, no shit, they, fa- they find him, and the mountain, lion, the, the mountain lion is sitting next to his dead body. No just sitting there. Way. Well, so food. I guess not a cyclist fan either. No, good for him. Well, but, Wolf's uh, a bear cat, right? So yeah, Cincinnati. He also played with Travis Kelsey. Yeah. He'll have uh, some inside info on that. Looking forward to that. The reason I bring it up is we've got the draft coming up here. And uh, Giants ownership has just uh, given the okay to draft a quarterback there uh, in New York. Damn, dude. Why what would you even announce something like that? Why jam up I your fucking... Know. 
Why, why let anybody know what you're doing ever? Motivation. Or it's a smoke screen. It could be a smoke screen, yeah. You, but they somebody wants to trade up with the Giants, they'll just swap out. They definitely don't believe in Danny Dimes. Was he he out? just signed last year for $160 million, and they're already done with him. The money that's being thrown around with Russell Wilson and this fucking guy, dude, and they're just like, cool. So they currently hold the six pick. Uh, and they think there will be a strong quarterback at that position. Someone yeah, but here's is the th- taking J.J. McCarthy at six. Whether J. it's J. the Giants or uh, somebody J. else. J.J. McCarthy at three to the Patriots is my guess. Drake, That's Drake May. I, uh, think, I don't think they're going to take uh, I think Vikings, they're taking McCarthy. The Vi- this is McCarthy. a smokescreen because the Vikings are going to trade up with the Giants. The Vikings are going to take fucking J.J. McCarthy. Yep. The Patriots did say that oh. pick is up for grabs if somebody wants to trade him for it. So Patriots, maybe. yes, yeah. just said that as well. So, But for, here's, the, here's the interesting thing about Danny Dimes. So usually you see these four or five-year quarterback deals where it's backloaded with dead cap space, right? Mm-hmm. His was the other way. So he had $81.5 million dead cap in last season, 69.3 dead cap this year, and then 2025 it goes down to 22. So they can cut him after this season, okay. and it's only it's a 22 and then 11 million cap hit year in two consecutive years. That's not bad for the NFL. That's manageable, right? So they could definitely draft a quarterback and let him play even two, even let Danny Dimes stay around for two years while they develop him, and only take an 11 million dollar dead cap hit. That's nothing, to be honest. Okay. So, like uh, they're they're positioned well to jettison him after this upcoming season if they feel like it. Gotcha. Uh, and then the Chicago Bears uh, GM said he was surprised. Uh, by the trade market for Justin Fields. I'm not. This happened uh, two years ago with Baker Mayfield. Um, Baker Mayfield, they thought they could get, you know, a shit ton of picks for him and everything else. It's exactly what the Bears tried to do. And then it just got to be too late in the market. Now, But why would you give up anything for Fields? Because he, you have to re-sign him. Yeah, there's only one year left. So yeah. Right. Um, they, they so if he does, like, pan out, right, you have to somehow drop money. Yeah that you're not super comfortable with on Justin Fields. Yeah, yeah, and the Steelers are set up pretty fucking nice now, to be honest. Great. They did so a great job this offseason. The, either, either Russell Wilson works and right. they let Fields go, which by let him go means two-thirds of the way – or by the middle of next season, they'll know if Russell Wilson's doing well. Right, or Fields and you will can, start by week 10. Yeah, yep. but you if, if you don't need Fields, you can trade him for something at that point. Like, his value will be high then because there will be injured quarterbacks all over the league. Fuck yeah. So now, now you actually have – the Pittsburgh paid nothing. They paid a six-round draft pick, which they'll probably flip either into a starting quarterback or a second-round draft pick. Which is fucking, that's a brilliant move by them. There's no way they can lose in that situation. The even got if, their quarterback out of the whole situation and can't yeah. pick it. Even if yeah. both guys fail, they spend $10 million total? Yes. So who fucking cares? Who cares? Right? It's, it's great by the Steelers. For the Bears, though. Um, it's I'll, the Bears. It's the Bears. And I'll go back to that fucking Baker Mayfield thing. I don't like Baker Mayfield. Obviously, it's documented on the show. Top 10 quarterback. However, we had when, a top, he had a top five touchdown interception ratio last year. Just <laughs> right. But, but I'll, I'll go back to where I think he's very, very smart in. So uh, during that whole trade debacle there, because Atlanta was going to take him, um, they would not get off of this first round, second round, uh, round pick at the latest. And Atlanta balked at the last second. They said, fuck you. There was no interest for Baker. Baker and his agents went out and did trade deals throughout the league. He took off a third of his salary on the back end just so he could play in his starting position. The only place was Tampa Bay. So he orchestrated that whole fucking thing himself. Uh, Now, the Bears said uh, they tried to do Justin Fields um, a bit of good here for, you know, trying to stay alive in Chicago. So they said the Steelers is a winning organization Mm -hmm. and that this would help them and everything else. I guess he requested the Steelers as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So... I mean, who doesn't want to play for Mike Tomlin? I know. I just would have figured he would have wanted to go to Georgia, go back home. Well, they signed fucking Kirko Chains, dude, which I don't agree with. Uh, take a fucking fifth-round pick or a sixth-round pick on Justin Fields. But uh, either way, it's the Steelers are in great shape for this year. Shit. Um, J.J. Watt comes back healthy. One of these two quarterbacks works out. You're good to go. Yeah, that well, Pickens kid at, at wide receiver is amazing. We'll go 10-7, and seven, make yeah. the playoffs. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, make the playoffs and probably win one or two games? No, probably losing the wild card. <laughs> to, I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. To Jacksonville or? No. They, no, catch, they probably catch a higher seed. Right? I don't yeah. think Jacksonville makes the playoffs next Probably year. not because Trevor Lawrence kind of sucks. Well, yeah. Yeah. that'll lead in, into this next I mean, story. Houston so, and Indianapolis will probably be the two playoff teams from the AFC South. I don't, it's not going to be Jacksonville. It's I, a, there's a perfect segue. So there was two <laughs> NFL GMs over the weekend that said – um, Urban Meyer 
personally ruined Trevor Lawrence because of the way he coaches and how hard he was on him his rookie year. I don't fucking buy that dog shit at all. I mean, I mean, no, he's regressed. Yes, uh, he's gotten worse. He's gotten okay. worse. Yeah, but under Doug Peterson, Peterson's good coach. It's uh, like how do you if like that seems like a, a personality problem. I think it's a Lawrence. Thing. I've I've had bad leadership before, and a, the and then a new leader, a good leader comes in. You're like, all right, cool. I can go back to being a normal dude. If one season of a bad leader can fuck your whole career up, then you weren't going to make it in the first. Place. Wasn't even a full season. I agree. Yeah, it was. What was it? Ten like, games. Fucking ten games. Ten games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I agree. It was very odd to hear that, but two different anonymous GMs said it in an article. And I was like, no, is it possible that he, he's just not, he's going to be a bust? He has very comparable numbers to Danny Dimes and Mac Jones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like very similar. And it's not like Jacksonville didn't get him help. I mean, they got him receivers, they got him everything this last year. You know, sometimes when you're born on third base, you don't adapt well. And Trevor Lawrence had fucking everything in college, and I assume had he has a bunch of raw talent. I just don't think maybe he just doesn't work hard. I don't. I mean, he had two really good. He had what's that white running back, Will Compton, and he also had uh, BTN. Not Will Compton. Will Compton's on busting with the Bush. Yeah, he's uh, he had it at the end, and Will whatever the fuck the guy, the white kid that was a running back last year. He he, there was some overlap there as well, and he had great receivers. He had the best defense in the country those couple of years as well. It's like. That's what we were always talking about with Alabama. Some of the blue bloods. Renfro. Oh, you're talking, Renfro. you mean uh, Shipley. Will Shipley. Sh- Will Shipley, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Renfro was one of his receivers. receivers uh, yeah. T. Higgins was before him, I think. High school. So he went to uh, high school in Georgia, yeah. and he was at a loaded fucking high school there. I know that high school. That's what I'm always Didn't talking about. Game, I believe. Yeah. I think that's why you never see Alabama or Ohio State quarterbacks do well in the NFL. They've never gone through the struggle. And, and you, USC as well. Other than Carson Palmer who, you know, was – he had a lot of mid-years too, but he was actually a good quarterback. He was a good pocket quarterback. Probably Hall of Famer. People, yeah, people at USC get used to doing – what. this is why I don't think this motherfucker is going to be good in the NFL. They get used to having good protection, and you run around and make shit happen. You cannot do that in the NFL. That's why Mahomes is so good, yeah. right? He got He's his a, ass beat yeah. half yeah. the season yeah. at Tech. Yeah. They go 6-6 I mean, six and six every rocked. year. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And then yeah. he even, even in his, like, the first couple of games he started in the NFL – was a learning experience for him as well. And he had the benefit of sitting behind Alex Smith, who was like, technically speaking, a great quarterback. Technically. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have great physical talent, but technically he was amazing. What he did with that amount of talent, it might be one of the more impressive quarterbacks in NFL history, to be honest. Yeah. Because he, I mean, he didn't, like him and Drew Brees, basically. Yeah. Not super tall guys, not huge arm strength, but they fucking made it work for years. And the uh, one Ohio State quarterback <laughs> that has been successful in C.J. Stroud so far didn't run in college. No. He stayed in the pocket, and he played a pro-style mm-hmm. offense. So, like, yeah, I, it, it's so far. It's translated. Uh, I worry about him partying this offseason. Right in that Georgia yeah, we'll game. See. Yeah, well, he didn't, ha- he didn't, he didn't have a choice. But Which do you think, backs were out. based on all this shit we're talking about, because we've got Mac, Mac, jo- I mean, there's Mac Jones, Justin Fields, there's so many of these guys that come from these blue bloods. Um, everybody that came from USC – Leinart, fucking uh, uh, Matt, whatever the fuck. Barkley. Barkley. Yep. Uh, who was the other one? Butt fumble. Oh, Sanchez. Uh, Sanchez. Sanchez. Yeah. None of those guys had any success in the NFL, right? And from any of these blue blood schools. Carson th- Palmer was solid. Car- that's, right, that's what I'm saying. He's the one outlier, right? Yeah. So what makes you think? Because K- Caleb Williams is not Carson Palmer. He doesn't play that style of football. He, he, play, he plays the make up style, right. right? What makes you think he's going to be successful in the NFL? It's very Mahomes-ish. Yeah, he's very Mahomes-ish. Uh, I'm in. It's just his attitude, and I don't know how that's going to translate once he gets to the NFL. He's yeah, I mean, never. He 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 won't play beyond his rookie contract. Look at these. Like I'm just reading off. This is a random list of the top ten quarterbacks in the NFL. Mm. Don't ignore the order: Lamar Jackson, Louisville; Dak Prescott, Mississippi State; Josh Allen, fucking Wyoming; Matt Stafford was on a loaded Georgia team. Fair enough. To a loaded they Alabama weren't. team. They weren't that no, great. No, no, they weren't great. Yeah, they, I, they never they made fine. the playoffs. They were good. They were they fine. Ne- but they never made the playoffs. They would well, lose like three or four games a year. Yeah. yeah. They, they, right. they were good, but they never made the playoffs. But it was, a, it, it was still a top two, top three SEC schools. Yeah. Then were, LSU Those Georgia, Matthew right? Stafford Georgia teams yeah. were good. They, they were fucking, good. they were in the Sugar Bowl They when they obliterated RIP Colt Brennan. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, they, had, they were good teams. Who, who was their running back? Uh, wasn't Gurley. Was before the, Gurley was after that. Yeah. They had, I mean, there was talent. They had A.J. Brown, right? Oh, A.J. Green. Or A.J. Green. He, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. Was, uh, who was yeah. insane. Jared Goff, Cal, fucking Purdy, Iowa State, C.J. Stroud, Ohio State, sure. Mahomes, Tech, Kirk Cousins, fucking Michigan State, and then 
Like I, it, I forgot he came from Michigan State. God, did. no wonder he's such a fucking loser. He did, dude. He yeah. Did. Sucks, man. But, yeah, what you're saying is that none of these very highly successful quarterbacks came from blue blood schools. Yeah. Well, some of them, a couple. It's very rare that that happens. But no, I would say none in the top five. No. I mean, and think about who are the best quarterbacks of all time, right? Montana. Montana went to? BYU. Notre Dame. Oh, uh, no, Dame. Steve Young went to BYU. Yeah. So yeah. Montana's a blue blood. Yep. I mean, Elway's, Stanford. Um, they, were they were pretty good back then, though. Yeah, for That's sure. That's not yeah. today's Stanford. Yeah. So he, you could count him. Dan, where did Dan Marino go? Pitt. 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 But so, Pitt was good. They were Big East they, back then, I think right? they had won a natty right before him. 79. Yeah. Yeah. They were Big East back then, right? That was still yes. Big East football yes. before they got into the yeah. ACC? Uh, I mean, but like Favre, Southern Miss. Yeah. Obviously, Peyton is fucking you Tennessee. Know, Tennessee and Brady's Michigan. Never won a natty at Tennessee. Nope. No, he didn't. Yeah, and to be honest, the Michigan wasn't... Brady and never won. They weren't an outlier. Or they, they weren't like a, a high performer when Brady was there either. No. Brady they was won a, a national championship. He was a backup. No. Yeah, he, and his, backup. When, he was a, when he was a retro freshman, they won a natty, yeah. but he, but he didn't, didn't play. Do it. But he was a blue blood school. Sure, it's yeah. definitely, it's always a blue blood school, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, it wasn't, it wasn't like this year, it wasn't like this year's Michigan or yeah. Ohio State or fucking Alabama or something like that. I mean, he was you still know, a seventh you know who round pick. Has mm. never had a good quarterback in the league, I think. I think. Because uh, Texas, University of yeah, no oh, shit. Vince Young had like two good seasons, I guess. With some respect on Cole McCoy, oh, just <laughs> riding the pot. <laughs> Dude, he's been in the league for a decade. Yeah, we're not saying he didn't that. have personal success. Yeah. Sure, just not yeah. professional. He success. Has, no, he has one good Monday night game like every three years, where he goes off and gets this. a new contract. They don't come from these fucking. It's rare. Yeah. Especially these days, it's rare. Like, the, all the guys that we mentioned that were any good were from fucking the 1970s. You don't have any uh, faith in Quinn Ewers next year? Not no, really, to no. be honest. Me neither. If he hits a growth spurt, maybe. He's still super small to me. I just think it's probably not. It's probably not. <sighs> he had good receivers, man. And he's got a, he had the best running backs. Like, I don't know. Uh, lastly, before we get out of here, uh, they're keeping Justin Jefferson in the loop on the Vikings quarterback plans. So whatever they're doing up there, they're definitely keeping him happy J. J. If and McCarthy. going all in. I, I they're gotta they gotta either trade up and get a quarterback or they gotta package their first round pick with Justin Jefferson to get two more first round picks or something like that. Right? There's no way there's no other way yeah. around it. You can't fucking bring in some chud to throw to the best receiver in the league. He's the best. Jaden like he, Daniels would be his fun, first four dude. years in the league. No one has even close to what he's done in his first four years in the league. Not any receiver ever is anywhere in the ballpark. Of what I also have done. a problem with uh, the overthinking that's going on right now with Marvin Harrison. No. Where they're like, uh, should we draft neighbors over Marvin Harrison? It's like, nope. no, no. No, you shouldn't. No. No. A, a draft some, anybody over a 6'5 dude that runs mid fours that has the best hands I've ever seen in my life. Are you fucking best. out of your it's mind? Just like the most, I've ever he's, he's, Mike he's the most he's, NFL ready receiver ever. He's, like a, ever. He's, a, he's a slightly faster Mike Evans. And look at what that motherfucker's done. 11 consecutive seasons to start his career with 1,000 yards or more. Shut the fuck just up and don't draft don't overthink him. it. Draft he doesn't him. open my his God, mouth. Man. All he does is work hard. I don't even know what his voice sounds like. Oh, he's aren't never they, done aren't they, fucking I think you could probably guess. Aren't they getting a little sketched out because he didn't do combine or a pro day? Yeah, he sat out. They're not up. sketched out by his dad. I, no, well, but you know what, you know what he said? The GMs told him, you don't have to. You know yeah, what he said when they like, asked him about it? He goes, I played a bunch of games, watch the tape. Yep. Right. What else do the you end. need to see? Yeah, but I mean, even like McShay right now is talking himself into Neighbors over Marvin Harris. I'm like, what are we doing? Have fun with it. I mean, Neighbors is going to be a, Dope. a fucking great deep threat. He's great. He's fast yeah. as shit. He is like a Justin Jefferson yeah. type. I guess you could say like maybe I was looking at random uh, drafts today. Or I, was, I was looking up at five slam and jam. I just kind of read about Houston or whatever. And like, you know, uh, Hakeem Olajuwon was in the same draft class as Michael Jordan. They, he was picked first. Jordan was like what third or something. Yeah, like that. Sam, like, Bo yeah. Sam Bowie was second. Yeah. I mean, Which obviously Jordan's better, but like, but I'm he not, didn't make a bad. Pick I'm not mad. No, no, if I, I had they won two key. titles, right? Yeah. yeah, right. And that's so that with this draft, as far as wide receivers go, clearly Marvin Harrison is just god tier. But like, hard to fuck up picking the, out of the first three. Either wide one receivers. of those two would be fine. But if you had to pick a guy that's probably going to have injury problems between years four and eight, it's not going to be Marvin Harrison. No, no, because no, no. he's no. a big dude, right? No, I, I, it's got to be. He's Mike the best Evans has only far. missed like two games in his whole fucking career. Yeah, yeah. It's huge. Uh, appreciate you tuning in, kids. Go to iTunes, rate the show a five star, and leave a quick review. Also, head on over to Spotify. It's just a five star, and you can walk away. Uh, switch on over to Drinking Bros Podcast, 
We'll be live uh, on Patreon. We'll be live with fake news here in about 10 minutes. Bet with us or against us on mybookie.com. Don't forget to use that promo code Drinking Bros to double that first deposit all the way up to $1,000. For Danthony, Danthony Holloway, Delco, Dan, Hot Bob, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Monday Morning Recap. Good morning, everyone.